promise to do everything in my power to protect this city. What's up guys? Today I have finally got my hands on the Samsung Freestyle. Now, I have been waiting to test this projector ever since it was launched. On paper, this has some impressive features and specs. I really can't wait to put it through the paces to find out what it's capable of. Now, first of all, let's see what we get inside the box. We've got your user manual and your quick start guide. We've got a Type-C to Type-C cable, a Type-C power brick, and I'll just quickly show you a close-up of the voltage information. Now this comes with a small remote control finished in white. This has a built-in rechargeable battery and you can see at the bottom you've got a Type-C charging port and you can see you've got some popular shortcuts there including Netflix, Disney and Prime. And last but certainly not least, the projector itself. Very quickly check out the specs. So this is an LED DLP short throw projector. LED lamp life is 20,000 hours. Brightness is 550 lumens. You've got a native 1920 by 1080 resolution and this does support HDR10 and HLG. You've got a 100,000 to one contrast ratio. You've got autofocus and auto keystone correction. Maximum optimal screen size is 100 inches. You do have micro HDMI so you can hook up your favorite game console or TV box. This projector is actually running Samsung's Tizen OS. It does support Amazon Alexa built in. You've got 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.2 and it supports AirPlay. You've got a 360 degree 5 watt speaker built in and it supports Dolby Digital Plus. And finally the projector is quite compact in size and it weighs only 8. 130 grams. Now on the front you've got your lens, you've got touch control for power volume, on the side you've got a microphone flick switch, mini HDMI and a type-c port for power and that is pretty much all the ports. At the bottom you can see your speaker grill. So the body is made from a rubberized kind of plastic and the stand is actually made from metal and you do have a rather useful lens cap on the front. Now I just want to confirm this projector does not have a built-in battery so it's not completely portable. You have to use it on the power which is a bit of a shame as I really would have loved if this was a completely portable projector. So without any further ado, I'm going to get this all hooked up and we are going to find out exactly how good the Samsung Freestyle really is. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the projector set up. First thing I want to do is test out that fan noise. So standing right next to the projector, you can expect a fan noise of around 32 to 35 decibels, which is basically silent. If we move one meter away, you're going to get around 32 to 33 decibels of fan noise. So basically, it's silent in operation. And you are now looking at the home screen. This projector is situated around three meters away from the wall in front of us. And we are projecting just under a hundred inches. The projector is short throw. So it was giving me nearly 130 inches. So I had to actually go into settings and shrink the screen down in order to fit the size of my wall. Now you can see a fully comprehensive operating system here which resembles Android TV OS nearly. Well, this is actually Samsung's Tizen OS. You can see a row with all your applications that you pre-install during setup. And yes, Smarters Player is included, which is very handy. And you've got lots of stuff that you can watch, um, recommendations, a bit like Android TV OS. Now, first of all, let's go to the settings. So if I hit settings, all settings, all right, so here are your main system settings. In the background, you can see Samsung TV Plus, um, which automatically starts playing here and there. And I do find that a little annoying. So first of all, picture settings. So we've got some presets. You can see I've got it set on dynamic because that looks the best, but you can have dynamic, standard or movie. You've got expert settings. So this is where you can actually customize things to your personal preference and so on, so forth. So lots of customization options available for your picture settings. Now, if we go to sound settings, you can select the output. So I've got it set to project a speaker, but you can also connect a Bluetooth speaker if you want a better sound. We've got sound mode. Now I've got it set on amplify. You can have adaptive and standard. Amplify just makes things a little bit louder. 
and we'll talk about the sound quality a little bit later in the video. Expert settings, this does support HDMI eARC. You've got digital output audio format, and if I select that, you can choose PCM or auto. Now, Dolby Atmos is grayed out, so I'm not sure um, if this is gonna work. And we have auto volume, sound feedback, and reset sound. Connection settings, so you can name the projector. You can connect to a Wi-Fi network. So if we just click on external device manager, you can see all your options there. Now, if we go back, you've got Apple AirPlay settings. So if we click on that, you can see AirPlay is loading up and we've got it on require code first time only, um, subtitles and captioning and about AirPlay. So that means this projector supports AirPlay, which will be interesting to test. Now we've got a section called broadcasting and expert settings is your only option and over here you can adjust the teletext language settings and audio options now both of these things are grayed out so i can't make any changes there general and privacy now you've got projector settings which is really important and this is where you can mess around with your keystone now keystone correction is already set to automatic so you don't need to worry but if you wanted to fine-tune things you can easily do that from here now, if I go back, because I don't want to mess with it, I got the picture perfectly how I want it. Also, same with focus adjustment. It's automatic focus adjustment. But again, if it doesn't look as good as it should, you can fine tune things manually with your remote control. So I've got it perfect, so I'm not going to mess with that. Now, here is another important feature, scale and move screen. So if you're in my boat where you don't have a big enough room, you can scale the screen down all the way to 50%. But I'll put it back to 100% to show you what happens. So 100% basically covers the wall and overlaps the ceiling slightly. I have to take it down to about 80 and that looks perfect. And this is pretty cool. Watch this, guys. You can move the screen slightly left and right. Just in case you have things in the way, you can also fine tune things. So we've got auto flip vertically, high altitude mode. And if you're wondering what that is, this prevents the projector from overheating when operating at high altitudes. And then you have a setup guide, which you will see the first time you turn the projector on. So that was your projector settings. Again, very important settings and, and you've got a lot of options to play around with. We've got accessibility. I want to run through this now because there are actually a lot of settings. These are your accessibility settings. I'm going back. Terms and privacy, forget about it. You've got voice settings. Voice assistant, you can choose Bixby or Alexa. And you've got a few other options here, as you can see. System manager, where you can change the time, um, sign in or sign out of your Samsung account, change pin and your usage mode. You've got parental settings. I'll give you a quick look at it. So you've got a few options there for your parental settings. You can make a pin code, etc. Power and energy savings. So we've got a screen saver, auto power off and your options are off four hours, six hours or eight hours. What else do we have? Start up screen options. You can start with smart home hub or auto run the last app. So I've actually deselected that. Let's go back. And then you've got reset. So these are all your options. There is a support section where you can do firmware updates. So as you guys saw, you've got extensive settings to play around with. And we're gonna talk a bit more about the apps you have. So if I click on apps, that will take you to all the apps you have installed on this box. We had small shortcuts that you could see as well. But here is another look. You've got an e-manual there as well. All the usual popular apps are there. Netflix, Prime, Disney, YouTube, Apple TV. You've even got Samsung Health. Now you might be wondering, why would you need Samsung Health on a projector? So you can see my Galaxy Watch Classic is right there. It's asking me to connect. It's connecting right now and it's connected. There you go. So now I can initiate exercises and follow as I go along. And my workout will be directly synced to Samsung Health on my watch and my phone. So I guess this product is all about Samsung's ecosystem. And there is more to talk about when I say ecosystem. Now let's talk about Samsung TV Plus. So this is basically free internet TV by Samsung. And this is the app you would get in most Samsung TVs. On the remote, you just have to tap this button over here and then you'll be presented with an EPG guide. So it'll show you all your channels on the left. And then you can see exactly what is coming on right now and after um, throughout the day and all your channels there on the left. So this is Samsung TV Plus, a completely free internet TV included um, with this projector. So you don't have to pay for the service. It's completely free. 
But the only thing I don't like about this is every time I turn the projector on or go to settings, it just starts loading up Samsung TV Plus. This is something that annoys me. Um, I don't want to be forced to watch Samsung TV Plus in case I'm just checking out the settings or if I'm just trying to uninstall an app. So that's one thing I don't like. Samsung TV Plus kind of forces itself uh, on the user. I did install Smarters myself from an app store. So I'll quickly show you that there is an app store. So here is the app store. Most of them you can see I installed. BT Sport, I haven't installed, it's right there. You got YouTube Kids. So all the popular apps are there. Uh, most of them I have installed. You've got categories as well, and you've even got games that you can install. And I'll quickly show you what sort of games. Um, nothing mainstream, they're just more like indie titles. So that is what you can expect in terms of gaming. All right, so that should give you an idea of what this operating system is all about. So this is Tizen OS. So if you're on the Samsung ecosystem, there's a few things I want to show you that's quite useful. Here is my Samsung phone. I could just swipe down from the top and click on Samsung DeX. And you can see it's asking me, do you want to start DeX on the projector? I'm saying yes to that. Here we go. Samsung DeX desktop is fully loaded. Um, if I had a keyboard or a mouse connected up via Bluetooth, I'm ready to use it. Another thing you can do is casting. So if you were in YouTube, for example, pull up one of my videos like that and cast that video directly to the Samsung projector. So that video is now gonna play on the big screen. What's up guys, today? So Samsung DeX is working and you can cast videos directly from your Samsung. What if you don't have a Samsung? Well, if you've got an Apple phone, I've got iOS right here. No TVs with AirPlay were found nearby. No idea why, this is the iPhone 13 Pro and AirPlay doesn't work and you can't cast videos from an iOS phone either. Now, I wanna test out the screen mirroring to see if it will work on a non-Samsung phone. So this is the Poco F4 GT. If we tap cast, you can see Samsung projector has come up. If I tap it, There you go, guys. That is working absolutely fine. And it does actually work with minimal lag. So very useful screen mirroring for non-Samsung smartphones. Okay, so now we're gonna try casting a YouTube video from this uh, non-Samsung Android phone to see if casting will work. And technically it should. So you can see Samsung projector has come up and this video should play on the big screen in a few seconds. What's up guys? So things are working quite well. As long as you have an Android phone or a Samsung phone, you can take advantage of screen mirroring or Samsung DeX. Um, unfortunately, if you've got an iPhone, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the casting or the screen mirroring or even AirPlay like it claims to do so. All right, so we've had a look at the system OS. We've had a look at some of the features. All right, so I just wanna quickly mention about the remote control. The remote control is responsive. You don't even have to aim it at the projector. You can aim it straight and you can see it's responsive. It works absolutely fine. The remote also does have a built-in microphone. So if you were to press the mic switch. What is the weather like today in London? Tonight's forecast is clouds and showers with a low of 53 degrees. Or you could do something like this. Watch Expendables. And there you go. So the remote control is responsive and the voice search functions work extremely well. So I do want to quickly mention this does support smart things. So if you're already in the ecosystem, you're already using smart things, it will work perfectly fine with this projector. Let's start with YouTube and see what this projector can handle in terms of screen resolution, contrast, brightness, etc. So maximum streaming quality supported on YouTube is 1080p at 60 FPS and it does support HDR. So let's see what that looks like. Just paused it on the lizard as I usually do with projector videos. So projection quality looks good. The brightness, the contrast, the colors, everything actually looks pretty decent. If we zoom in, you can see there is no pixelation up close and all four corners are looking 
crisp and tidy. Now, what happens if I switch the light on? Let's see. You can still see Mr. Lizard and the quality still doesn't look bad. This projector is actually usable in the daytime, guys. But if you really want to enjoy yourself, switch that light off for a proper home cinematic effect. Okay, so let's check out a few more trailers, shall we? It is a privilege. Where have you been? Drug study. In the science. We had two years without getting fired. Jerry, you don't have to work so hard. You're retiring. I don't have to be. My new project. I'm building a robot. Didn't look too bad, does he? I wonder what he'll do. Fine, I do. Oh my god! <laughs> what are these trick glasses or something? Watch out! I'm keeping myself fit and, you know, my updated modern look. The test flight is a go. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. You were narrating again. I was not. Just... I <laughs> will promise to do everything in my power to protect this city. And I'm pleased to say that Netflix does support 1080p streaming. But not only that, it does also support HDR and 5.1 surround sound. And Amazon Prime Video also supports 1080p streaming. Of the sun is too flimsy. And Disney Plus does support HD with HDR10, 5.1 sound, and some movies also support IMAX enhanced. Hypocrite! <laughs> So streaming wise, those were the most popular apps and what their capabilities are. So it looks like 1080p streaming max with HDR and the picture and streaming quality is absolutely amazing. All right, so now it's time for some gaming. So we're gonna hook up a PlayStation 4 to the mini HDMI port on this projector. All right, so we're gonna use an adapter, mini HDMI to regular, and we're gonna plug that straight in and that should technically work. So here we go. So we're plugged in the PlayStation 4. It doesn't automatically detect and change the source. And there's no button on the remote which allows you to change the source with ease. So what you're doing is going into menu, go to connected devices. And at the bottom, you will see HDMI. So just tap HDMI. And um, what does legislation say about prioritizing water needs? And you can see the source is now changing. There we go. PlayStation 4 is now working. All right, so got the PlayStation 4 connected up. As you can see, the image quality looks impressive. You can see the small icons over here, all of them look crisp and clear. No distortion, no blurriness, uh, no pixelation. So I'm looking forward to playing games on this. I think it's gonna look great. Uh, let's just jump straight into some gaming, shall we?
So there you have it guys, that was the Samsung Freestyle. And here are my thoughts. So pros and cons. I am so conflicted. The Samsung Freestyle could have been one of the best, if not the best, small compact projector I've ever used in my life. But due to some caveats, Samsung really let us down on this one. The design and software is impressive. The picture quality 1080p native is also impressive. I love the advanced customization options. I love the ability to fine tune the projector settings. That's focus, keystone, positioning, and lots, lots more. You have the Samsung ecosystem, so you can enjoy decks. You can connect your Galaxy Watch. You can cast videos from your Samsung phone. You've got smarter things compatibility and lots, lots more. If you have a non-Samsung phone, you can still screen mirror. You can still cast videos. However, I could not get airplay to work on iphone now i really enjoyed streaming movies video games also looked incredible i managed to connect my ps4 with an hdmi adapter i had lying around but i wish a suitable adapter or an hdmi cable was included in the box otherwise you cannot connect your game console tv box or even fire stick until you buy one the built-in speakers are very good quality it gives a decent punchy sound movies games and videos all sound amazing but the volume does not get very loud you just kind of wish it would go a notch louder but fortunately you can connect a sound bar or a speaker system via bluetooth there is no audio jack so you can't use a wired system it's gonna have to be bluetooth so this projector has impressive software impressive design impressive projection quality and decent enough sound quality it feels like it ticks all the boxes for a thousand pound projector but does it well actually it does not here are the caveats airplay not working it could be a user fault it could be my fault um, so if you have got airplay to work let me know i wouldn't mind trying that out again but here is the biggest issue the biggest problem i have with this projector it's too damn slow it's like getting a lamborghini car and putting a nissan micro engine inside it struggles at everything it's laggy when opening apps it takes ages to open settings the menus are sluggish the slow processor used in this ruins the experience for me a thousand pound projector with a half-hearted processor inside so projector is too slow for everyday use but once you start streaming a video or a movie at 1080p the video itself streams fine so no lagging while streaming or watching videos or playing games and also not much input lag when playing games either so it's good for gaming i found that the lagging and the sluggishness is just when accessing the menus and the settings and opening and closing apps i also find that the free samsung live tv just constantly tries to load itself up in the background no matter what you're doing um, and it just consumes resources and it gets really annoying now coming to the remote control there is no button to change the hdmi source again strange to not have that on a projector remote control also the biggest and most wasted opportunity here there is no built-in battery so this cannot be used as a completely portable projector yes you can power it off a power bank but otherwise it's going to be a wired projector unless you buy some optional extra battery base from samsung so yeah money making tactics as usual and to sum this one up here is my latest video projector chart for 2022 allowing you to compare the specs and prices of all the latest projectors and these are all ranked by projection quality and overall features so as you can see the samsung freestyle has earned its position at number 12 on this chart so it sits just under the x jimmy mogo pro and you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chigstech.com and read them at your leisure so bottom line the samsung freestyle is an incredible nearly portable but compact home cinema led dlp projector it's premium in build quality and you're getting very good 
brightness and overall picture quality. I would have called this one of the best portable projectors of 2022, but unfortunately, there are some strange caveats to consider. I think with Samsung, they have purposely made this product under par because they want to sell extras. They want to sell sequels. If they put a faster chip and battery in this version of the Freestyle, no one's going to buy the next version. So if you want the very best experience in a portable projector, I would actually give this one a miss and wait for the Freestyle 2. The Freestyle 2 will be exactly what this product should have been. It's just the way Samsung works. You might be super rich and you have a thousand pound to waste. At least you won't be disappointed with the picture quality. Now I've actually had a much better experience, for example, with a much cheaper brand, the XGME Mogo Pro, and it ticks most of the boxes. Now you guys tell me, is it worth the money? Would you buy it? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more innovative, honest tech videos, hit the bell icon and like the video if you found it useful. Follow me on socials for more behind the scenes content, updates, giveaways, etc. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.